Hey there, and welcome to the Confident Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Brooks. Join me as I sit down and chat with co-hosts, friends, and carefully curated guests and talk about all the things that empower you to become your best and most confident self. So let's get started. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode. So today I want to talk about a topic that's probably touched each of us at some point, and that is the journey from burnout to self-discovery. So we've all been there, right? Feeling overwhelmed, buried underneath a mountain of tasks and day-to-day demands. And sometimes it's like, for me, I always just say, I'm in this wide open sea. I'm just drowning. And so when we feel like this pressure and the demands are just weighing on us, we look outside for some sort of numbing or distraction or if you're anything like me, you just keep burying yourself even further into like the work and the daily to-dos and the hustle and all that stuff. And it just becomes so, so overwhelming that it feels like we are just, there's this unease inside of us as we're carrying these burdens that feel so heavy and this pressure. And what happens is that we eventually, this pressure pushes us beyond our limits. And we find ourselves that we're driving at a pace that is not only unsustainable, but it's also so detrimental. Like we as human beings, we are not machines and we are not meant to do. We're not human doers. And so when we look at that from how our bodies and our minds are greatly impacted and affected, we realize that they just can't keep up with it, that we start to break down. And to better understand this, this cycle of burnout, I want to take a minute here to really know, to really discuss what it means and how it manifests into our lives. And so burnout really is just a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion And it's caused by this excessive pressure and demand and the prolonged stress, right? So when we look at this, it's like, how how is it actually showing up in our lives? How are we physically feeling? How is it in our headspace, in our mind space? Like, what is that emotional feeling? Sometimes, you know, for me, it feels like a pit in my stomach. It feels like this knot that I cannot unwind, no matter how much meditation or, you know, yoga or nature walks or weightlifting or whatever this movement is that sometimes it just feels like you cannot untangle this knot. And, you know, sometimes that's where we, we as, you know, we're conditioned to keep doing what we do until the alarm starts blaring and that is where our physical bodies start breaking down and that we can no longer, right? So it's that unsustainable aspect of it. And so that really stems from like this overwhelmed feeling that we're not able to meet those constant demands and pressures. And when we burn out, we lose interest in the motivation in the tasks that we're supposed to be doing, right? So we try to find something simple so that we can get that quick hire, that quick win where it's like we know where the projects are on the horizon, but what do we do? We, you know, clean the kitchen or we'll vacuum or we'll write a little thank you note to somebody. Like we'll do anything and everything to avoid the big things because we know that we just don't even have the capacity to take on something so monumental at this time. And it could just be literally your daily tasks, your daily projects, whatever that is. But we feel like we are going to break at any moment. And so, you know, as kind of how this is manifesting, we start to look at like we are burning the candle at both ends. We're burned out. And we begin to really break down over time. And we find it difficult to maintain focus, causing our productivity levels to dip. And really those symptoms of burnout include feelings of being tired and drained most of the time. The frequent headaches or those muscle pains right from the tension and the stress that we're carrying. We definitely see a change in appetite. I know that I have. And sleep habits and the amount of sleep, right? The quality of sleep. Those are big changes as well. 
as well as just feeling that, like a sense of failure and defeat and self-doubt. And so when this happens, I want you to know, one, this is a cycle that we're conditioned in doing. And eventually, we know that we can't keep up with the pace. And it's almost like that snowball factor. You have a little, little snowball, and the more we roll it down the hill, the larger it gets. And eventually, it's just going to hit a wall, right? And it's going to shatter. And that is burnout. And if you can't tell, I've been there many times. And I don't want to say that it gets easier that, like, how do you not learn less in the first time? Well, because as we're going through life, we don't see sometimes the obvious until it's too late. And what I consider myself is like this seasoned burnout junkie. What I have learned in this most recent bout of burnout is I started to recognize some of the symptoms ahead of time so that I can actually jump ship before it hits the iceberg and we know how that story ends. It's about having some of this mental awareness still left in your mind that we don't eventually hit that that wall and crash and burn. And then, you know, we just kind of lay there like, what do we do? And the picking up of the pieces takes a whole lot longer versus if you can save yourself now from the impact, that's the goal, right? I mean, the reality is, is that life will always teach you the same lesson. It's just going to show you in different settings, it's different experiences, right? Because yes, you can see it coming on. You're like, ah, there it is. The quicker I can reel myself in, the more I'm going to be able to save myself from the impact. And hopefully, you know, as these journeys and these experiences happen, it's not going to be as prolonged and as severe. And I think that that's kind of the message that I want to share with you guys today is like, if you're finding yourself kind of in your first bout of burnout, like I'm cautioning you, recognize those symptoms, recognize the, the physical body, right? Because sometimes we just keep pushing. We're like, oh, it's just a headache. I'll take some aspirin for it. Oh, I have a, you know, a so full muscle. I'll just stretch it out or go to a chiropractor or a massage or something. But when they keep showing up, right, the pain's not going away. That's your body signaling those alarms. And, you know, obviously the brain fog, the fatigue, the overwhelming, we're irritable, we're stressed, we're just anxious all the time. We don't get to sleep, you know, as entrepreneurs or driven women in general, we think that we can thrive off of like four hours of sleep or even a blink of an eye. But that's not true. We really need to prioritize those, our, our health, right? Our physical health and well-being. Because what good is your business or what good are you in your business or career, whatever path you are, if you are not at your best, right? So if you're operating at like 10% and you can only give 100% of that 10%, well, guess what? Your productivity is going to dwindle. Your, your team's going to recognize. Your clients are going to feel the end. Like all of this is really this ripple effect. And so that's why it's so important. You know, I talk about health and wellness as the core foundation. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, man, do I feel like a hypocrite here? Like I'm talking about this out of one side, but why am I experiencing this on the other? And it's not to say that you are hypocritical or that you're an imposter. You could still have those same healthy habits and routines, but you are just applying those into a different level of where you're at. So they're not always applicable. Like, so you should be changing up your game your, your routine, your systems, your things as you are constantly elevating in your career. And sometimes we don't, the, that imbalance is what throws that off. But keeping that at the forefront of your mind is like, yes, keep your health and well-being in check. Always. Like, check in. Hey, how are we feeling today? Ooh, we're anxious. Okay, start spotting those patterns. How many days are you anxious? Oh, I rec recognize that I haven't really eaten today. Where are you? Yesterday, come to think of it, I've been like this all week, maybe even all month. And now, right, we start spotting those patterns. We start recognizing it. And so that's where we can correct course and we can start making those small changes and small adjustments. And that's why I say it gets easier as you go through, but being aware and mindful and recognizing that those habits, those pillars, that foundation, 
has to also grow as you're elevating in your life. So also, if you are in a space where you're like, well, I'm not really on a growth path, like I'm pretty content where I'm at in my career, but yet what are we allowing into our space to add on to our plates, right? Are there pressures and demands from our personal lives, our family, our children, our friends, our community, the things that are just adding on to our plates? And a lot of times we want to do more because we think that the doing more is going to, you know, get us to the next level or feel like we don't want to let somebody down. But in doing so, we're bearing the weight of pressures that are unsustainable. And eventually we will, we will break and we'll crumble because it's too heavy for us to carry. So just sharing a little bit of that from just a personal experience, being that season burnout junkie, and I understand completely the toll that it takes on your lives. And it's been, you know, quite honestly, a challenging period. But this isn't, to be honest, I'm actually not in this season right now. I'm sharing this now because I've had to do some of that uncovering and rebuilding and rediscovery so that I can realize like, oh, that's what it was. That's where I was in this season. And here are the lessons and here are the steps and here are the, here are like all the things, right? And that's what I want to get back through this, you know, through a podcast or my writing, through the things that I create, because it's almost a disservice if I hold on to these valuable takeaways and lessons and do nothing with them, right? So my goal here is just really to, one, shine light and awareness on this, but also hoping that you can see yourself in some of those, you know, descriptions or details and you're like, oh, that's me right now. Then give yourself a mission to slow down. Just clear some time in your schedule for rest. And what I need by rest isn't just necessarily going to, you know, sleep longer or going to bed earlier. Rest is in that slow period. It's kind of in that idle. And, you know, in that idle, we're still, we're still rolling, right? We still have this engine breath. But we're not going forward and we're not parked entirely with the car shut off. But we're in this thinking mode. We're thinking things through. We're processing. We're reflecting. We're turning inward. That's what idle is. That's what rest is. And in doing so, you giving your you're giving your mind and your body, but also your emotions time to settle and just be. And so, having those experiences that you're allowing yourself to gives yourself that permission to really challenge the belief, right? The belief of your identity. Why we feel so ingrained that we must strive, chase, and do. What is it that we're actually after? Are we tying our identity and our purpose and our work? still trying to prove something what and what is that what are we trying to prove are they is our identity tied to our accomplishments and our successes and achievements i know for many of us that we're drivers right so we just drive we do we chase we achieve but that's not really who you are and so i challenge you to reflect and go back to your core identity into who are you really? And I'm talking about who you're created to be, right? You are created with, on, and for a purpose. And the sustainability is not conducive to who you are as a human being. And so we are much more than our achievements. And it's time to really explore who you are. So I want to break this down just a little bit further and really talk about now the power of your identity. And so when I talk about our identities, you know, it's this identity, this combination and collection of our life's experiences, our beliefs, our personal characteristics, our values, our passions, our uniqueness, the quirks, the, the, the creativity, the inspiration, the vulnerability. The authentic you, right? Who are you, right? Really, like to the core. And I challenge you then, you know, many of us just lead with our roles and our titles and our occupations and 
all of our, all of our successes, right? It's almost like we lead with our highlighted bios. But to be honest, that's not who you are. That's what you've done, but you're not the, you're not the end piece. You are not the creation of your abilities. You are the creator who is co-creating with your creator. And that's something powerful that we need to reclaim that power and know that, you know, as an artist, he is not his masterpiece. He's the artist who created something wonderful and beautiful. And let's reel that back into who you are. And so recognizing those collections and experiences and, you know, the characteristics and beliefs and all this stuff that makes you unique, that's what helps influence you and in how you view yourself and others and the world itself. So it's how we really define what is success. And so I had a conversation recently where somebody was talking about creativity and spirituality and success. And like the, just these conversations came up. And as I, I was listening to the woman speaking and just hearing what she had to say, and she turns to me and she says, well, what do you think that spirituality and creativity and all these things are? And I said, well, that's quite interesting because to be honest, it's all subjective. It's all how you perceive that, what that means to you. And so to take it a little bit further, it's almost like I can't teach you what love is. You have to experience it. I can't tell you what success is. You have to define that. I can't show you what creativity is. You have to feel that. You have to experience that. Right. And so when we look at this moment of success or this, this striving and chasing, you're only doing that actually to prove something to yourself because everyone else has their own definition of what that means. And so that's where I'm asking you to take a step back and really get to know you. What makes you tick? What makes you drive? Why are you so pursuant upon that chase? And, you know, when we can really start to identify this and start reeling this back in that idle state, right, where we're taking some time to rest, reflect, and really restore some of that energy that we're exhausting, that really we, we don't even have the capacity to exhaust anymore. And really start to reset the narrative behind your identity and the chase to whatever that is. And so we can do that by, you know, nipping that negative voice in our head and just telling you to shut up, right? Because that is that voice that is telling ourselves that we're not worth X, Y, and Z, right? We're not worth the pursuit. We're not worth the, the chase to achieve more. We're not worth it. And so it's almost like we're trying to outrun that voice to prove something that, yes, we are worth it. Yes, it is indeed, you know, I, I'm not a failure, so I'm going to prove that wrong. Watch me, watch me succeed. Watch me accomplish. Watch me do right. It's almost like a challenge. And so, but the truth is, that is a lie. That is a story that you've been telling yourself, right? Same here. Same holds true. I had to be like, whoa. There it is again. There it is. And so having that insight now to realize this is the truth and the story that we've been telling ourselves, a story that keeps us stuck in a loop of self-doubt and insecurity, right? So instead, let's just pick ourselves back off the road, right? Like ready to shift from, from neutral into go. But we now have a refined sense of purpose and direction because of the clarity that we've just reclaimed, knowing who we are. So now getting, getting very clear on the direction of where we want to go, who we are, we, what we need to set out in our destination, and now start to pursue that and realizing that in this, we're reclaiming that power. 
we're redefining what success means or whatever this chase is, right? The outcome that has led to us to feel really just burned out and burning the candle at both ends. And now we get to have that power to create a new story, a new change of our circumstances. So in this season of burnout recovery, that I challenge you to really lean into is extend yourself grace. Give yourself so much grace and so much love and so much compassion because at the end of all, we didn't know what we didn't know, right? Like in the moments, we're just going until we realize what we have done and how we can now correct course. But really the the whole purpose of this is to really lean in extend that grace to ourselves and forgive ourselves we've made mistakes we found ourselves in the same narrative loop and instead of beating us ourselves up and feeling the guilt and shame of like oh my goodness how could i what did i do i can't believe it right so we just go into these narratives and all that does is keep us tethered to that past version so for us to release that we have to let that story go let that narrative go let that version of you go and so how can we do this we start by acknowledging one everybody makes mistakes and no one is perfect one thousand percent right we have to embrace those flaws our imperfections our mistakes our mishaps and we start learning from it it's all part of the process and it's not about how far we fall right? It's about how quickly we can pick ourselves back up and begin anew, to begin again. And we get to rise. We get to rise up and we get to elevate and rise with others as well. And so that's really just like the power of what community can can help you with, is that when you fall, you're supported. And the best way I can describe this is almost like, you know, as we're going up this hill where we want to achieve the success the pinnacle of the the mountain but sometimes those mountains are so high right the peaks and the valleys that we could fall off a cliff a thousand feet and that one really destroys us right we're down there we're like oh man this one really hurts but then as we continue our journey we're going up another you know valley or mountain to the top and this time our fall is maybe a hundred feet because there's people there to catch you. And even though there's going to be somewhat of a blow from the impact, the pain and the time spent healing and recovering gets shorter and shorter. And that's what I'm saying is that is when we keep recognizing the same patterns and the same lessons, the rebound and the resiliency being that confident woman to have that courage and fortitude and the insights just get back up. That's who she is. And so, you know, really when this, you know, to kind of pull this all together, again, it's about extending grace, giving ourselves permission to just be a human, a human being, not a human doer. And letting go of that guilt and the shame, and we free ourselves from the weight of past failures and paving the way for transformative self-growth and change within. That's the lasting change that we want to create and cultivate. Because when we could change yourself once, we now have that insight to keep doing it again. And that's the lasting, right? So I challenge you to ask yourself, who are you now? Not who you were yesterday or who, who you might be tomorrow, But who are you in this moment, in this very present moment, in this season? This is the starting point. This is where we begin again. And this is where we reclaim that power. We're here to reignite that confidence and that spark that was once there. But when we've been buried and burned out, we're we're using that spark to ignite both ends and we've burnt the candle at both ends where there's nothing left for us. And that's where we breed self-doubt, insecurities, criticism, 
And while we're in this dark place, what else creeps in? Fear, anxiety, depression, worry, scarcity mindset. Oh my goodness, what happens? What happens? I, I'm going to hold on tighter and I'm going to hold on tighter, right? And what do we do? We keep tightening that grip. And the thing is, if we let go of that grip, that's the one thing that we could set ourselves free. So when we're focusing on those moments, we're dwelling in that past and we're anxiously looking for towards the future. But instead, let's embrace who we are in this very moment. And that is the powerful action, right? We take action today that transcends us into tomorrow, into next week, into next month, and so on. But I want to remind you, in all of this, in the midst of all this, you've never lost who you are. You might have lost your way. But the beauty of beginning again is the opportunity to start anew. And you get to set everything on your own terms, learn new lessons, and you get to define a new purpose and a new meaning for this new version of who you are today. So... In your reflection time, grab a notebook, grab a pen, and I want you to ask yourself this. What could be possible in this new season as you take time to rest, recover, and reflect? Embrace that power of the present moment now because this is the journey of self-discovery and self-improvement, and we have the power to create our own story. Time and time again, right? Each page is a new day. And as we start filling up the pages, we start creating new chapters. And the story continues on until you decide to change something about it, right? We decide when that story ends and when we get to create something new. So we get to define who we are becoming every step of the way and that is you reclaiming your power and stepping into your own unique version of the confident woman within so again i just want to share this from my heart from my experiences because i know the impact that it can make if you don't have the right support if you don't have the right insight if you don't have somebody who's been there and you're like thinking that there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. Nothing at all. You are perfectly imperfect, just as you are. And that, my friend, is enough. So hang in there. You've got this. Grab that pen and paper and start jotting down. Who are you today? And really start defining and refining. And as you do, you're confidently stepping into your best and most confident self. And that is where you are becoming your version of the confident woman. So take care, my friends. And until next time, you got this. Hey there. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Thanks again for listening. 